Alright guys, episode 2 in my PC water cooling guide. So in episode 1 I looked at the components necessary to build a water cooling system. In episode 2 I'm going to talk about design. Um, how those components fit together. Now this is a um, very important thing to think about before you go out and buy your components because you need to know what's going to be compatible, how it's going to go together, what's going to fit. Um, so design is very important. You need to know the amount of coolant and tubing you need, the amount of fittings you need, what um, water blocks you're going to need, all those kinds of things. In the first video I just talked about the essential basic um, components and their functions. This one is, this video is about um, compatibility and how they actually fit together in a case. So first of all, um, what case are you going to be building into? Uh, if, if I was water cooling, I always go for a full tower case so that I don't have any problems fitting in water cooling components and I suggest you do the same as a beginner to intermediate water cooling um, uh, water cooler you're better off building it into a full tower case so you don't have any restrictions um, and you can get creative so next thing to think about is what platform are you going to be cooling uh, is it going to be x58 sandy bridge AMD so let's say it's X58. So we know that the X58 platform has socket 1366. So when you go out and buy your CPU water block, they're listed by socket. So you need to buy socket 1366 water block. Um, so if you're just calling the CPU, that's all you need to think about for water blocks. But if you're going for graphics as well, you'll need to know your graphics brand and model. Um, now, a beginner to intermediate water cooler should really only be doing CPU and graphics, but if you're feeling brave and you want to cool the motherboard as well, put a water block on the motherboard as well, you need to know the motherboard brand and the motherboard model. Um, next thing I'll talk about is reservoirs. Now, in a full tower case, let's just assume you're going for a full tower case with plenty of room. It's really up to you whether you want to go for a drive bay or one of these type reservoirs that mount inside your case. Uh, the sizes are completely up to you but there is still some constraints and the only way to find out about those is by doing your research. Um, pick your case, look at reviews on the case. In the reviews look at how big it is, look at how much room there is. You don't have to go to the extent of measuring things because that really gets complicated. But just by the visual watching enough reviews um, and looking at what other people have done as well. Uh, I'm going to put a link to a forum in this video's information. Check it out. Extreme Systems Forum. It's the Water Cooled Case Gallery. There's like 140 pages of water cooled systems. And if you go through that, not to copy what people have done, but just to get ideas um, and to know where things fit like this is a Corsair Obsidian 800D so when you're going for your reservoir if you're going to put one there where I have you're going to have to know does one even fit there how big is it so that's 150 millimeters long and it's 80 millimeters in diameter there's another one there and that, that one only just fits I wasn't sure if that one was going to fit 80 millimeters by 150 millimeters and then you know the graphics cards are it's right next to the graphics cards so they're all the things you have to look at and think about um, and if you don't want to be in the dark about it you've got to make sure that someone else has done it and that you've actually seen it being done otherwise it's guesswork um, and the more guesswork you do the more risk there is of it not working and that's okay but you have to be ready to spend more money if it doesn't work if it doesn't fit you know, if you get all these parts and they don't fit in the case and they don't fit together, then you're going to have to change your design and you're going to have to go out possibly and buy more parts. 
parts that do fit um, and that do work. So it's a bit of trial and error if, um, unless you do what you've seen other people do. Not, as I said, not copying, but just um, learning what fits where and, and getting ideas. So that's how you think about your reservoirs. Um, now pumps is similar to reservoirs. Does it fit? Um, and also you've got to consider the performance which I talked about in episode one. Um, how many components are you cooling? So the less components, the smaller the pump can be, the more components, the bigger the pump has to be. So with the amount of components I'm cooling in this system, I had to go for these big Swiftec MCP655s. You're better off just buying the best, the biggest and the best from the start, and then you've got plenty of headroom for upgrades. That's why you build in a full tower case. There's plenty of reasons to build in a nice big case. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my pumps at the very bottom of the loop, and above them is the reservoir. Now this is a strict rule of water cooling. The reservoir must be above the pump, and you're better off if the pump is at the bottom uh, for draining purposes and for priming and, and bleeding purposes for getting the air out of the loop as well. Okay, so I'll just show you each of my loops. So coolant starts at the reservoir, goes down to the pump, gets blown up into the motherboard comes out there, goes up into the rear radiator, which is a Feza quad exchanger, so it's got four 120mm fans. It comes out of the rear radiator and goes into the top graphics card, then it goes into the second graphics card, then it goes into the third graphics card, and then it comes out and goes back to the reservoir. So that's the GPU and motherboard loop. This is the CPU loop. Reservoir, pump, CPU up into the radiator, which is a 360 millimeter triple 120 millimeter fan Feather exchanger. Then it goes back into the top of the reservoir. So, what have we covered? Water blocks, reservoirs, and pumps. Radiators. Um, how many components are you going to be cooling? How much overclocking are you going to be doing? And how much heat do these components generate? So, I can't go through all this at the moment because we're going to be here all day. You're going to have to do a little bit of research. I'll give you some basic guidelines for an X58. Uh, if you want some overclocking headroom, even if you're cooling just the CPU, I would be going for a 360 millimeter radiator, a triple radiator. If you're going to be cooling X58 and graphics, you'll still get away like single graphics, you'll still get away with the triple radiator. If you're going SLI or Crossfire X, you are going to need more than a triple radiator. So if you're doing CPU and more than one card, you're going to need more than a triple. And that's when things get really complicated because you've got to find another place to mount a radiator. So the more components you're going to be cooling, the more radiator capacity you need. So moving on to fittings, as I said there's two different fittings you can choose from, compression fittings and barb fittings. Whichever ones you go for, you have to think about the amount, the points of contact. Now this is something that you're going to have to probably either think about in your head, if you're Einstein you can draw it all out in your head, but what I recommend is doing a picture. Um, sorry, I've just got to get it up on the screen here. This is a simple picture that I did for this system that I was just showing you to figure out where my tubing was going to go, where the reservoirs were going to sit, where everything, um, where I was going to put everything in the case and the direction of the flow. So that's something you need to do and from that you can figure out what fittings you're going to need and how many of them and also vaguely um, how much tubing you're going to need. But tubing is the next thing. Um, if I was, were you, um, in, for a simple system you just buy about um, 12 
probably 12 foot, 3 meters, and then you've got heaps. Tubing is cheap, just buy heaps of it. Then you can afford to make mistake. Coolant also go overkill. It is quite expensive though. Um, for that CPU loop, I've used about a litre. For the graphics loop, I've used like two litres or something. Um, because remember, it's got to fill the entire radiator, all the tubing, all the water blocks, the pump, the reservoir, it's a lot of coolant. So, for the average system, I'd be buying about two or three litres, depending on how many radiators you have. So, say one radiator, single loop system with two components, you need two litres. Um, for an extreme system like this, I'd go about four litres. So there's some basic guidelines anyway. Um, so that's basically all you need to know um, for quantities, design. Um, you know, I've talked about how to fit things in together and how many of things you need and how to choose your parts based on your platform. So now I'm just going to show you a couple more systems. I know you must be pretty sick of looking at that system by now. Or maybe not, because it is pretty sexy. Um, now this is actually just a water box. It's not a whole system. So I'll just follow the route of the coolant. So it comes out of the reservoir, into the pump. There's dual pumps. So it goes out of the first pump, into the second pump. Then it goes out of the water box into the CPU, back out of the CPU. Uh, and then it goes into the first radiator, into the... And then out of the first radiator, into the second radiator, out of the second radiator, into the third... Hang on. Into the third radiator. And then back to the reservoir. So that's how that system works, and that's three triple radiators. So that's nine 120mm fans all up. Two Swiftec MCP655s, which is total overkill. Um, but I thought this water box can basically cool anything. I mean, three triple radiators and dual pumps. Beautiful cylinder reservoir from Danger Den. That's the radiator reservoir that actually bolts onto the radiator. Yeah, I want it overcool so I can pretty much plug this water box into absolutely anything. And seriously, that thing would cool that entire system on its own. Like all of the um, components in that system could be cooled by that water box. I'll just show you one more system and then I've got to wrap this up because it's a pretty long video. So this is in a Cooler Master HAFX. Um, I have other videos of all these systems on my channel, so if you want more detailed videos with all the specifications, make sure you look on my channel and then you can, you can watch those, because I'm not going right into the specs now, because um, it'll take too long. So Swiftec MCP655, out of the pump, into the top triple radiator, out of the top triple radiator, into the CPU, which is a Core i7-920 cooled by an EK water block out of the CPU to the rear radiator. Now that radiator has to be mounted on the outside because it's a Feather Exchanger Monster Light and it has three 140mm fans. So out of that into the top graphics card 5970 Crossfire X dual F XFX black editions in here. So it goes out of the first card into the second card back to the reservoir and then back to the pump. So I've strategically placed quick disconnects so I can easily pull this system apart and drain the loops. That's something else to consider in your design. If you want to make the loops easy to drain, use quick disconnects um, or place your tubing so that you can drain it. Because one day you are going to have to pull it apart. Alright, I really better stop there. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I covered everything about design. Thanks for watching guys.